Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our continuing side series on a technicality. What we're going to be doing today is talking about how to repair your Konami M2, whether it's the EPRA, the real-time clock chip, or the CD-ROM drive. But taking a look at the board itself, I've never seen the RAM chips fail, but if they do, those are off-the-shelf components and you can totally get them and solder them in place if you have the skills. The capacitors, same deal, easy to replace if need be. The issue is if the IO chip, the 602 PowerPC chips, or the Bulldog GPU Go, those are not parts that you can get. I've never seen the 602 for sale, and the other two chips are definitely proprietary, and the Bulldog GPU is a ball grid array chip, so trying to replace that would require some real expensive equipment you're not going to have. But what we can fix is if the BIOS chip goes bad, it's an off-the-shelf component and you can write a new BIOS. But one of the more common components to go bad is going to be the 7K ROM right here. And that's going to have a security key built into it that the CD is going to check against when it boots. If you take a look at the back, you will see that it's just through-hole via component. So you can desolder that, program it with the correct data, which is in the main dump, and you can socket that chip right back on. But taking a look at the real-time clock battery here, this is on some of the games, it is just a chip with a lithium battery popped on top and it's epoxy together. If it dies, you can drill through the side and put a coin cell battery holder on there, but when it goes dead, the data is gone, so if you do need to burn that, you can also find it in the main dump. So taking a look here at the computer itself, what we're going to do is just pull up the main dump file, and this is for Battletris, the second revision JAC, and you're going to see that the only data that's on there is going to be the GX66, JAC, and 1998 over in the hexadecimal values. So that is the code that you would need to program. Coming over here to our programming, we're just going to go down to ST, which is the brand of the chip, and we're just going to scroll down until we find the exact chip we need to burn. That way it knows exactly how to write it and interface with the burner. And we're just going to go ahead and hit select so we know we have that queued up. And if we just take a look and we read it, we're going to see that it's blank. There's a couple weird blips on there. The person that sent me this chip that needed to reprogram said it was brand new, so I'm just going to assume that's fine. And it wrote fine, so no huge deal. Let's come over here. I will open up the file I need to burn to the chip, which is going to be from that main dump. And it does work. I've checked it against my own files from my original games. Just hit OK and you'll see that that same data is in place. So if we just come up here and we program it, it is gonna program that data to the chip. I get one bit error here, but because it's not in the beginning, that GX636 JAC 1998, it should be fine because everything else there is gonna be able to be rewritten based on high score tables and everything. So it's only that original line of code that we need and it should be blank all the way down. So that's how you would fix the real-time clock chip. The board will not heal that itself, but it will write to the 7K EEPROM from the CD, so you can fix that. But taking a look here, we've got a CD-ROM drive, September 1998 manufacture date, and the board was tested in 2013, so it has been tested for seven years, and that CD-ROM drive is 22 years old. Taking a look around the back, we have a stereo cable, we have our IDE cable, and then we have a four-pin power cable as well. Uh, you need have the stereo going into the front of the board for stereo output if you want it. By just popping this drive out right here, sometimes you have to wiggle them. Be a little bit careful with the IDE drive. You don't want to tear anything. They are relatively delicate. But this is one of the most common faults on the Konami M2. The internet will tell you that these are notoriously unreliable, but what that really means is they access the CD-ROM drive whenever they're running. Yes, some of the data loads in to the RAM, but they have Redbook audio, so the CD drive is always spinning up. You will see that there's a grounding cable right here going into that screw hole. We do want to make sure we take care of that. But having removed these screws here, carefully pull that CD-ROM drive out. Don't jam into the PCB or damage anything because you do have some cables there. But if we just take a look and we flip it over, we're going to see those four screws right there holding the carrier to the drive. With the magic of editing, we can speed that up and get everything passed. And we'll be able to pull the original drive from the unit so we can replace it. And this is going to be the most common issue you're going to have to deal with when you deal with M2. Most off-the-shelf IDE CD-ROM drives will work. This is a Delta brand. I bought them at um, a computer recycler for like 20 bucks a piece, new old stock, and they work great. So just pop that out there, and we'll be able to put it right back into the board. Now, I have had a few CD-ROM drives that haven't been able to read with the M2, but really, if you buy anything around the same time, as long as it's a CD-ROM drive, you should be perfectly fine. Line the holes up on the carrier, and you can see that I had to actually switch the direction of that. Just make sure that it's shorter towards the CD-ROM drive and longer on the back. And again, just pop those four screws right in there, and we will be good to go. That drives in the carrier. Now, to get the games to boot, it has to be set to master. That's not my favorite term in the world, but you have slave and master right there. And if the jumper is not set to master, it will not boot the game. 
Mine is, but you can just pop that jumper right off with your fingernails and slide it back onto the master post. That way it will be able to boot up. And then just going in there, make sure you're careful of that stereo cable because it does route alongside that CD-ROM drive, but we'll just go ahead and slot that right back in and we'll line the holes up and we'll make sure that we get that grounding cable back where it came from. I don't know that it's super essential because this board is grounded in a lot of different places, but it was there when we took it apart. So we're gonna definitely put it back together the exact same way we found it. And what you wanna make sure is you train that grounding cable to stay out of the way of the CD-ROM drawer. I have had a couple PCBs that come in where that cable's pushed out and it will hang and obstruct that door if you aren't careful. And around the back, if you do damage the IDE cable, any off-the-shelf component will work. I bought that for 99 cents on Amazon, it's good. Just plug in your stereo input, you'll plug in your IDE cable, and it is keyed so you will be able to see exactly where it slides into so you can't put this in the reverse order. Same thing with the power cable, it's keyed as well, so if it's not going in, just turn it upside down and it will definitely fit. Don't jam it in there. But now you'll see we have that new CD-ROM drive attached. That old CD-ROM drive doesn't spin up, it tries to read the disc, but it will not actually spin the motor, so I may try to fix that in the future just because it is original. But coming in here, I apologize for the mess, my office usually isn't camera ready, but the game is booting up with that new CD-ROM drive attached. And that's basically all there is. The 11K, the BIOS checks out okay, 7K, EEPROM checks out okay, and the mask ROM is sound data on a third PCB. If that fails, you just don't get gunshot sounds through an external speaker, but honestly, if it fails, your game's gonna run perfectly fine anyway, minus that sound effect, so you're really not missing too, too much. But the game works perfectly fine. We're able to resurrect another Konami M2. And 9 out of 10 times that these boards have issues, it is always with the CD-ROM drive. And that's where that M2 is unreliable comes from. It's just CD-ROM drives burnt out in the arcade all the time. Short of that, thanks so much for watching. Do us a huge favor. Go down below and hit like and subscribe. Otherwise, we'll see you guys on Sunday for another video as well as Tuesday. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.